Alright, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about three uh, terms that relate to the overall cohesiveness of an artwork. And they are unity, variety, and harmony. Okay, so let's delve in. So when we're done with this uh, video series and after you've had a chance to look at a series of artworks, I, we need to make sure that you understand the definitions of these key terms of unity, variety, and harmony. You should be able to sort images to demonstrate demonstrate your understanding of these three key terms uh, and be aware of some of the similarities and differences between these concepts as well because they're they're distinct but they are also interconnected okay so let's jump in so first of all we have to remember that um, these ideas are principles of design which means that they are ways of um, kind of organizing and structuring the elements of design. So when we think of unity, I, I want you to think of the idea that everything kind of belongs together, right? That there is a sense of uniformity or um, cohesive, like really strong visual cohesiveness in the work in order to kind of help create uh, the overall structure and visual engagement. Whereas variety is that there is a lot of differences in the artwork and the differences are are striking and it kind of creates a sense of kind of uh, chaos or disorganization um, that is purposeful in order to help communicate a message right so unity is about similarity variety is about kind of this idea of difference and then we have the concept of harmony in which there's kind of like an equilibrium uh, between elements that are unified and then the elements that are different and then by balancing out or creating that visual harmony you're able to create a really um, unique uh, and maybe perhaps a little bit more of a dynamic sense of cohesiveness in your work. All right, so now that we have these three definitions let's take a look at these three artworks in terms of their overall use of line. Right, so we have uh, three pieces. The one in the bottom right is by Bridget Riley. Uh, and this is an image that I would say uses a unified um, approach to line because every line is vertical. Every line is about the same thickness, right? They are different colors, right? But that doesn't distract from the fact that the overall linear structure is highly um, uniform, okay? In contrast, we can take a look at um, William Kentrich's draw, um, charcoal drawing on the left-hand side of the image, and th the lines are kind of going all over the place. We have some lines that are drawn, some lines that are erased, some that are vertical, horizontal, diagonal, um, right? So th there's, the line work is kind of um, deliberately, purposefully moving in all sorts of different directions, creating a, a kind of a frantic feeling overall. Right, and then if we take a look at Norval Morisot's Thunderbird Protecting Its Young, which we see up in the top right of our screen, right, here we're seeing a more harmonious use of line because there is um, no line that is exactly the same, but there, the, sort of the types and style of the line, even though it changes throughout the composition, it reappears in various um, parts, right? So we can see, right, that there's this kind of like, um, where the lines begin to intersect the the uh, it gets a little bit thicker and it gets rounded off and then down at the bottom portions of some of these pieces here that there's almost like a drip type of effect where the line undulates and goes from thin to getting thick uh, and there's that you know going back to another principle of design of repetition right that repetition of of some of the elements is what really helps to create that sense of overall harmony within the work Okay. So, uh, if we take a look at our next slide, which investigates shape, again, we have these three concepts at play. Okay, so number one, we have this idea of overall um, unity. If we look at Piet Mondrian's uh, composition C number three with red, yellow, and blue, right, we have very strong, rigid geometric shapes. They're all kind of quadrilaterals, um, you know, a little bit of variety in terms of their shape. Um, but they're, they're very, the, the overall structure remains the same. Whereas if we take a look at um, Juan Miro's The Garden from 1925, we see a lot of variety in this particular piece because 
all of the shapes are kind of like different and they're um, all over the place and there's some geometric forms there's some organic forms um, or shapes I should say uh, and you know the, the colors kind of bouncing around all over the place and what happens here is that you're you're really encouraged to kind of like look and your eye moves kind of frantically from one part of the composition to the next and then lastly we have Bill Reed's uh, grizzly bear uh, up in the top right which is a Haida composition from um, the, the west coast of, of uh, Canada and again we have um, this idea of harmony because you know the, the overall shapes are kind of consistent we have sort of these rounded edges in the teeth we kind of have these bulbous um, shapes for like the eyes and then at the the wrists of the bear as well um, and we have these kind of, you know, there, there's differences in the shapes that are there. But again, it's that use of repetition in different parts of the co composition that help to create that overall sense of visual harmony. Thirdly, we're going to take a look at form. Uh, and again, uh, we have these three concepts. We have harmony uh, in the Laocoon, which is up in the top right-hand corner. Uh, and the reason that um, I selected this particular image in order to represent harmony is because, again, it's this idea of um, repetition. So we have these really strong, organic, um, open forms uh, in the figures I, that are kind of stretching out that, you know, there's a sense of anguish and, and, and such that's coming through as they're trying to escape the snakes. Um, but at the same time, the, there's this kind of form that kind of balances out the, the torsion and, and stress of the figures, and that's the snake that weaves itself throughout the entire composition, right, starting at the ankle of the young man, and then up and around, around Laocoon's uh, leg, up and around, back and behind, right, so there's this kind of s um, smooth, uh, curving line that reaches all the way around the composition in, in order to create that sort of um, harmonious unity of the di um, different types of figures. Right, below that we have Henry Moore with his um, recumbent figure. Right? It's, a, it's a very simple, um, it's elegant, it's an organic form, uh, you know, and the whole thing kind of seems to go together. But if we take a look at the, the Burgers by Auguste Rodin, um, um, this particular piece created in 1903, right, there's a lot of variety happening, right? We have some strong um, vertical um, figures, but they're all looking in different directions, they're all facing different directions, um, and uh, right, w th this sort of variety really compels us with this particular piece in order to begin looking at it from 360 um, degrees. Whereas with Laocoon, for example, right, it's really compelling us to look at it from one primary vantage point. Um, when we're taking a look at color, um, we have Mark Rothko's Untitled from 1965, which is a um, uh, an example of unity, right, that's using a warm color scheme, everything kind of comes together, um, belongs, there's not, you know, not a lot of contrast happening. Um, and then the same thing uh, with um, general ideas, right, which is in the bottom right, um, which is a, a Canadian-based uh, collaborative group from the uh, 80s and 90s. Uh, here we see the idea of variety, right? Because we have the, the sort of this blue and what kind of looks like orange, right? Which are complementary colors. And then we have this red, um, green, but now suddenly the colors are kind of looking um, the, like it's red as opposed to orange, right? So there's a lot of um, kind of variety in the color choices here that kind of start playing around with that dynamic energy of the colors, but then we have up at the top we have um, Claude Monet's Water Lilies from 1908, and this is a an interesting image because um, not only is it a huge piece of work, um, but the color scheme here is kind of on that analogous side. So it's not warm, it's not cool, but they're using he's using colors on one part of the color wheel in order to really kind of create the overall composition of this piece. 
right? So we have this, um, the warm of the, the yellows of the flowers and the, the, the greens are a little bit on the warm side, but then it's also kind of contrasted with the, the blues, but the blues and the yellows are connected to each other through the green, so creating that overall sense of visual harmony. When we take a look at texture, right, we can use harmony in uh, kind of interesting ways, such as Merritt Oppenheim's object from 1925. And we see this up in the right hand corner of our screen. And this is um, literally a, a surrealist artwork that was born out of a conversation between Oppenheim and Picasso. Um, when they were discussing how anything can look good in fur, and the, lo and behold, Oppenheim comes out with this particular piece. Um, but, the, you know, that sense of unity, the, the texture is so uniform, and so it works so well together, right, in order to kind of make it engaging, but at the same time, right, knowing what that object is, it creates a little bit of discomfort um, because of the overall texture of the piece. We then... Um, if we look below that, we see Brian Jungen's prototype for new understanding from 1984. Uh, he is a First Nations uh, artist from out west, uh, again coming from the Haida culture in um, the, the west coast. And he's seeing some kind of similarities between traditional imagery and the designs in um, Air Jordans and how he could manipulate that object in order to create uh, objects that look like traditional um, hide a masks, right? But in terms of texture, we see a lot of variety here because we get the softness of the sort of the, the inside that cushions the heel. We have the, the leather um, uh, that in this case, it's forming the, the, the ears, um, the texturing in the um, white portions that line the face, the plasticized um, pieces that make the eyes, right? And then we have the shoelaces that have been um, dismembered in order to be able to kind of create that soft, uh, softish hair, right? So a lot of different textures created, even though they're all coming from one object. Right? And lastly, if we take a look at uh, George Littlechild's uh, image, which is entitled Stands in Her Culture, right? this one, there's a sense of harmony because even though there's um, um, different media used in this particular piece, he's created a, a continuity between sort of between the media, the photographic image and the drawn elements over top um, by the, his choice of, of, um, of, of texture, right? We read different pieces as having texture, but they're not texture. Um, everything's been kind of softened in terms of the focus of the image as well in order to go with the, the overlays. Okay, so we can have a variety of different textures as well. All right, last uh, image that we're going to take a look at here is the idea of value. Um, and when we look at uh, Raphael's School of Athens from uh, the early 1500s, right, the, the use of value is extremely unified, right? They're, they're, I'm going to say that most of the images fall within the middle range, sorry, most of the, the values fall within the middle range of the uh, value scale, right? There's not a lot of really intense shadows. There isn't really a lot of really intense highlights. Everything's kind of set in the center in order to create that overall sense of harmony. Right? But then if we contrast that with Eugene Delacroix's uh, Liberty Leading the People from 1830, right? We can see that there's actually quite a bit of variety, right? There's highlights, there's strong shadows, I, um, right, and they're fairly intense on one end of that value scale and the other in order to kind of create that, um, that point use of emphasis in this particular piece as well, right? So variety of values is um, can often be sort of associated with using the more extreme ends of the value scale. Right, and lastly, we're going to take a look at Carrie James Marshall's School of Beauty School of Culture from 2012. And, and I've selected this image as a, the representation for harmony because it kind of incorporates elements of both. And we, we're starting to see that sort of full dynamic range of value from highlights to shadows um, as his, uh, you know, there's, there's a definitive light areas, there's intense black, um, black areas, 
um, on the clothing and in the the or even with the the skin tones of the figures and the furniture, right? But he's also been very deliberate in making sure that he's using mid-tone values with the the whole environment in order to kind of create that sense of harmony throughout the entire piece, right? So these are some examples of of how unity, variety, and harmony can be applied to different uh, images. Hopefully, by taking a look at some of these strategies and how they apply to the elements of design, you are able to inform your own creation and think about how to further refine your own compositions. If you have any questions, please make sure you're asking and best of luck with your own piece. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.